My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about uh, 60 feet. So someone said that they've uh, been to a drag racing place or whatever, I can't remember what he said. His name was Matt, I remember that. <laughs> easy, easy name to remember that one. And uh, he did ask, he said, uh, when they got dragster meets and all this, he has a lot of the professional guys and all this to talk about the 60 feet time. Why is the 60 feet time really important? That's what was his question, I don't understand. Surely the whole run is important, you know. Now they call it the 60 feet ET. ET means elapsed time, how long the clock has been running. Why does the 60 feet matter? Well, the reason is, is because when they've done runs over time, again and again and again and again and again and again, they've realized that if you have a good 60, uh, 60 feet time, you are going to have um, unless the engine goes pop, a good uh, quarter mile time. But why? The reason is, is because you're about to put all this horsepower um, from standstill into actually moving. As soon as you get in over that initial rolling resistance and actually start to move, then um, you can then start to add more and more power, and more power, and more power, and more power, and more power. So in a sense, it's like you know, it's like the start of a race when you do the hundred meters. If you get off good and in front of everyone right there and then you are probably going to win the, win the race so the 60 feet time it's got nothing to do with your reaction time it's got to do with getting from standstill to 60 feet putting as much power as you can trying to get as much trying to get as much traction as you can and that's what it's all about really can you get enough traction can you get enough power into the ground to get you initially moving after 60 feet you're already moving then so it's easier then to put all the power um, into that actual run it's that initial slip that you get it's that initial slip of putting too much power in where a traction control system or like with motor gp launch control and stuff like that or launch control you get on bikes um i know there's that who hire in motor gp about launch control they've got it they haven't they've got it they haven't blah 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 um but it makes you know it makes the most different it makes the biggest difference and let's just use motor gp as a good example the guys who get off the line the first have to do less work. You look at the spacing on the grid, you know, so you have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like this. Now, if Danny Pedrosa's here, yeah, and he blasts past everyone and they get to the first corner and they go like this, then these spacings don't really matter. It's about that blast to the first corner. And that is exactly in the sense like this 60 feet thing, the drag racing. It's who can get there. You know, like I say, if you get a good 60 feet, that means you've got a good launch. You've got a good, good traction, good bite into that track. Now you have done the 60 feet, the rest of it is probably going to be a lot easier. Um, so that's why they're bothered, because that tells you if it's a, in a sense a good run or not. The same thing with, you know, motorbike racing. If Danny Pedrosa starts off at fifth on the grid and gets into first, before the first corner, if he can just maintain the set, the race pace, he's got a good chance of winning that race. You know what I mean? If he can, unless he's going to have any problems, if he can maintain the same speed as everyone else, then he's going to win. You know, or close to, he's going to be on the podium probably. And that is the whole point: is that there are some racers who are shit starters, and they come in late into the race. You know, they go from eighth to fourth in the last six laps, 10 laps, something like that. It's too fucking late then, you've got to make up that time. If someone can get a good four seconds, then you've got to make up that four seconds. And if, you know, if you're starting at the start, then it's easier than it is if you're starting at the back. Because the distance of the grid really isn't that much compared, compared to the whole track as a percentage. So it's the launch, that's what it's all about. With drag racing, and a lot of times these guys wind down the power, they have too much power. You know, they have so much power, and they have to wind it down because they're slipping. They're just losing traction. You know, this is why they go to so much extremes. Why they've got bikes, they've got back tyres like this. This is why the tyres are flat. Biggest footprint they can get out of it. You know, this is why they do burnouts to fucking get the tyre up to temperature so it's sticky and grippy. This is why they spend so much time fucking around with that bloody track. You know what I mean? Making sure it is dry, there's some rubber on the track. It is sticky, sticky, sticky. And you could, because that's what drag racing is all about. It's all about that initial acceleration. Hope that makes sense, you know, and for bikes as well as wheelies, which is also another problem. Because if you've got, you know, your head up in the air and you're gonna, you know, it's plowing through fucking custard, isn't it? Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.